The very first time I had a deaf student, they said, you're my first deaf teacher. It stopped me in my tracks. I had to suppress my feelings and function like a professor. I wanted the class to hurry up and finish so then I could break down and cry. At the same time, I wanted to implore that student. Do you know how lucky you are? In this student's mind, she sees that there are so few deaf faculty out there. There just isn't representation. In fact, there is underrepresentation in general, in all career fields. For example, when I share that I have a background in archeology, span students are astounded because so many stories go untold. It does not occur to them that deaf can. We can do things they never considered or even imagined. Growing up, I didn't really have many deaf mentors. When I went to college, I began to meet deaf community mentors. I saw deaf people working in different fields and learned from their approaches, their philosophies. When I decided to pursue healthcare and medicine, I didn't have deaf mentors. I didn't know of anyone. I found out that there was a deaf medical student in the program. Med school typically lasts four years, and this deaf student was in their third year. I ended up being accepted to that school. When I started med school, the other deaf student was in their fourth and final year. We met and sat down to visit. It was nice to see how they had done well with their career. I had a good friend who I met here in New York City. She worked for New York Society of the Deaf. We met through work and ended up hitting it off and becoming very good friends. She is who encouraged me to go to Gallaudet, to go to college. She saw potential in me even when I doubted myself. Eventually, I went to Gallaudet and she decided to move to DC at the same time. She became my mentor and was such a huge support throughout the years. I got a mentor who met with me regularly along with a small group of friends. I asked her countless questions involving the business of helping survivors and victims. Over time, she continued to advise me until it was just the two of us. Finally, one day she said, Marilyn, I am not going to help you anymore. Just go do it. She gave me just the push that I needed to get going. I started in the basement of my home. I was completely naive, having no idea what I was getting myself into. I simply wanted to serve deaf women. At that time, the focus was on women. So time went on and I learned, facing a few obstacles along the way. The agency grew beyond what I had ever planned or dreamed was possible. I just wanted to serve a small region, but we kept adding to meet various needs. And before I knew it, we had a building. We had a big program and it became a national model. 